COVID-19 in children, how to suspect, what to investigate, and how to treat. Hello everyone, we are all fighting this battle and I'm sure we will win. I'm sure by now most of us have been exposed to this virus and we've created sort of immunity against it. Today I will just highlight the picture of COVID-19 in children and this is more for healthcare professionals. And before starting, I have to admit, this is new to all of us. Please feel free to correct me, add comments and add your findings because we're all learning and every day is a school day for us. Today I will just highlight how COVID-19 has been presenting in children. I will reference a few studies. One has been published in the New England Journal uh, of Medicine and another one was published in the Lancet. They are both from China and they talked about one of them screened around 19,000 children who were in contact with their relatives with COVID-19 positive um, relatives. So they highlighted around 171 child who had this uh, COVID positive. They talked about 41 of them were having fever and around nearly half of them or 48% of them did have cough. In addition, of course, to the all coriza symptoms we know, runny nose, cold symptoms uh, as usual for the viral illnesses. They mentioned about 15% of uh, them were asymptomatic. And I have to say, as Professor Misner, who is a professor of infectious diseases, we have to handle these figures carefully. A, because it's early in the disease, and also B, because we don't know that much about it. We haven't screened every single child in the community, and I'm sure if we do that, the asymptomatic children are going to be much, much higher than those. Now, the other study compared children presentation compared to adults. They looked at around 38 child and they described them in terms of the clinical picture, the lab findings. It's nearly the same. What the bottom line is, is that, again I'm referencing Professor Misner, it's overall viral illness. We can't prevent it or we can't stop it. We can minimize the spread of it and we don't have a treatment for it in children. But I'll come now to the treatment, how to like conservatively uh, treat it or to support it. Uh, now, the majority of children, uh, uh, they, will come, they can be asymptomatic, just having a bit of cough, cold, runny nose. Some of them, as mentioned, they will come with a picture of pneumonia. So be aware of those coming under the age of one year. They will present like a picture of bronchiolitis, but they are not that severely distressed. They will have cough, crepitations in their chest. They, will, they can have low saturation. So, and if you give the uh, targeted oxygen therapy through nasal cannula oxygen, that will be more than adequate. They can need more and more. And we are aware that there are few cases which has been fatal. And this happens with every single disease, guys. And let us highlight just the figures of, for example, if we compare it with other viral illnesses, uh, like look, for example, RSV, it is estimated that yearly, there are around, not as estimated, uh, around 33 million uh, child has got uh, the RSV bronchiolitis, out of which 3 million can be admitted. And they estimated 60,000 deaths from the RSV yearly in children. Measles kills around 140,000 every year. And of course, we know by now about the influenza, which kills uh, to 290 to uh, 650,000 every year. So. We know, we are aware that there, are, there has been few fatal cases, but this happened with every single viral illness. The majority that we have seen, they've all been mild, mild, mild clinical picture compared to others. I would just would like to highlight a few other presentations for these children. You can get a child referred to, especially older children, around the age of four, five, six. They can present with a picture of upper abdominal pain. We are aware that COVID pneumonia, it does cause peripheral pneumonia and it is referred pain through the intercostal nerves 
to the upper abdomen and that causes upper abdominal pain and we had a few cases like sort of referred as a case of query appendicitis if they've got abdominal pain and fever you can suspect these patients as being a picture of appendicitis so be aware of those now how to suspect in this season ask about cough even if the parents are not sure of that my child's coming with tummy pain yes there has been a bit of cough request the chest x-ray and that's what we have done and then do also the investigations in terms of how to investigate chest x-ray cbc we know in others they do troponin ldh d dimer and ferritin now in children as a whole mark still we see this lymphopenia you can see leukocytosis where the white cell count will jump up to 15 17 um, compared to adults they will have more leukopenia um, and that was also mentioned in the study published in the in the Lancet medical journal so if you see the clinical picture with a bit of cough or upper abdominal pain or the runny nose if you see the chest x-ray finding and if you request the blood test and you see these lymphopenia and also uh, the ferritin also has been high we have seen that troponin LD, ldh can be on the higher side uh, troponin and d-dimer we don't have that experience with it in children again feel free to add and correct me if you have with your expertise we're still learning and we're still developing our experience now the last section i will talk about how to treat here normally they do very very well and they recover with just a bit of oxygen you don't need to keep them in the hospital for a long time but you need to monitor them so keep record and keep auditing these children who present you with the COVID pneumonia or with the COVID positive and the main thing is isolation so they can be the source of infection to others so please once you see the child with COVID uh, positive pneumonia or COVID positive uh, in his swabs and um, make sure that the parents are self-isolating and no visit to grannies swabs can be negative but if you take the whole picture of clinical presentation and x-ray finding and the blood count the full blood count picture that should be more than enough to confirm the uh, COVID pneumonia we know or the COVID uh, uh, infection and we are aware that the sensitivity the best you can get from nasal swabs is 70 percent pharyngeal swabs 40 percent or even less so don't rely too much about the swabs thank you and please uh, add as much as you can let us share this information let us fight this disease we will get there we can see some improving figures everywhere and thank you and see you next time